Basic principles from representational art are important for effective visual illustration of scientific concepts. These principles include the use of light and shadow to convey the spatial relationship between a viewer and an object. These principles also describe the use of color. This slide deck includes static clip art and examples of animations that you can study and use by opening the presentation in PowerPoint. Value is a fancy word for brightness, the number of photons collected by a viewer from a given solid angle of view. Levels of brightness include highlights, midtones, and shadows. Form is a fancy word for a collection of positions arranged in three-dimensional space. For example, using this spotlight, we can delineate a form called a cube. As another example, using this spotlight, we can delineate a reflective sphere. The use of a spotlight to convey a form is one of the most common uses of shading. Perspective is the positional relationship between the viewer, optics, and a form of interest. It's the point of view. A cube viewed at great distance can be represented using three sets of parallel lines. Forcing these sets of lines to intersect at three so-called vanishing points indicates finite distance between viewer and cube. Curving otherwise straight guidelines can imitate the effect of optical distortion. In the previous two slides, we described the arrangement of highlights, midtones, and shadows on a two-dimensional plane to represent the three-dimensional relationship between forms, optics, and viewer. In the next slide, we explore color. Hue is a fancy word for color which corresponds to the frequencies or wavelengths of light. Apparently, white light can consist of photons at a variety of frequencies, including frequencies corresponding to what we informally call red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet or Roy G. Biv. For the case of sunlight, some thin lines are missing, but for simplicity, these lines are not illustrated. Under sunlight, a material such as this palette can appear white by reflecting the visible spectrum incident upon it. Paint can filter the light so that only some portions of the spectrum are reflected. Subtracting different portions of the incident spectrum creates, for example, spots that appear red, yellow, or instead blue. Mixing red and yellow paints provides an orange spot. Yellow and blue make green. And red and blue make purple. This arrangement is called a color wheel. As a matter of habit, I like to combine colors that are near each other or far from each other on the color wheel. Consider a blue background. Colors that are close to or analogous to blue include turquoise. Colors that are far from or complementary to blue are orange-ish. Use of analogous and complementary colors creates visual harmony. These choices of styles rationalize a large portion of the color scheme chosen in video tutorials I make. Additional shades similar to white are used for contrast, though with hints of blue or gray usually included to avoid a contrast that is too harsh or painful to read. The remainder of the slide illustrates stylistic choices that avoid the use of pure shades. We can create splotches of pure white and black easily on the computer, but most objects viewed regularly in human life are not pure white or black. Many objects we refer to as white are more accurately depicted as off-white, with a touch of color in this example slightly blue. And objects we refer to as black are often shades of dark gray, also with a touch of color, and in this example it's again blue. Additionally, slightly different mixtures of colors often occur at different locations, creating gradients. In the previous two sections, we described the palette of brightness and color we can use to create two-dimensional illustrations. The next two modules provide clip art and examples of animations that you can copy and paste into PowerPoint presentations. Eukaryotic cells are often stylized with a nucleus and outer membrane. This can be done with different levels of detail. The most detailed icons are not always the best for conceptual schematics. 
particularly when preparing small thumbnails, for example to remind viewers of content from previous slides, simplified cartoons with less detail may be less distracting. This slide also contains an icon of an RNA polymerase macromolecule, double-stranded DNA, and dice. The next slide contains examples of techniques to guide viewer attention using animations. Magicians misguiding your attention and flight attendants pointing out illustrations on safety cards take advantage of the fact that human eyes notice flashes and track smooth motion. When displaying plotted curves, individually trace out the axes and the curve. When introducing an object, repeat the animation. This works for fading in for explosions, and for wipes. When describing movement, animate the movement using a path. And when comparing two terms in an equation, highlight the terms by swiping back and forth with spotlights. In this slide deck, we have described basic principles of visual illustration and provided slides containing examples of clip art and animations that you can use in your own PowerPoint presentations. For additional examples, see the other tutorials on mathematical modeling.